I recommend you go back about five minutes and rewatch this part, everybody, because her daily habits are what, regardless of your station of wealth currently, this is not based on whether you're wealthy or not. This is something you can do individually and you do it as a family, which is amazing. Absolutely. So we follow this in the morning and right before we go to bed as well, we follow the gratitude practice and visualizing and revising all the events of the day as well. So we use revision as a practice for all the events. We also use revision for others. So every day I have like made it for others, at least three of the wishes I revise for others. And, and then I, I do. Welcome, everyone. I would like to let you know I have an exciting interview with. We have a lady who has had a wonderful life and she actually lives in India. She's going to tell us about that. Um, Swati Mahapatra is a good friend of mine. We work together. Um, coaching and also training and teaching other people. She's uh, attended uh, several classes with me together. In fact, we have some uh, something in common that we found out about each other concerning Bob Proctor. So that and much more to come as she helps us see how people in India and worldwide can also manifest and use the power of their imagination to be successful. So let's get started. First of all, welcome Swati. Hi, Robert. It is an it is a pleasure for me to be in your channel and it is so amazing to talk with you after a long time, even though we have been connected with each other all the while since the last two years, it's such a pleasure for me to be with you. Thank you well, so much for this opportunity. Well, it's, it's my privilege. You act, actually glow. Every time I talk to you, it's just like there's an energy and just a, a, a glow of happiness. I know you have a a very happy uh, family life there in India. And uh, you've been using the laws of attraction and more so the law of uh, assumption from Neville Goddard in recent years. Tell us a little bit about, uh, again, first of all, once again, let us know where you are in India because I'm I'm getting a lot of viewers from India so and they'll recognize your, your area. Yeah. So I'm basically from Mumbai. So I'm based in Mumbai. I work in a multinational company. And I am a complete follower of Neville. I use law of assumption in my day-to-day -day life. I make it work for me all the while. So it is so rooted in me that every moment of my life, I keep on using it for myself and for others as well. Well, excellent. I, so I actually met Sawate on a, our, our common uh, Facebook site, Neville Goddard Mystic Teachings. And um, we also met again in some live classes, a couple of classes that I conducted a few years ago. And then her comments and her posts on our Facebook site. And again, I know the majority of you viewers uh, have already subscribed. Again, I, I highly recommend that Facebook site, Neville Goddard Mystic Teachings. I've been posting it in my description. So you'll see the, the uh, it once again below. But um, I met Sawati there, and we have had some uh, excellent conversations, even some personal private conversations about coaching and so forth. She has actually helped me, even though I've been coaching for years, she actually helped me. And we found out that we had something very uh, in common concerning Bob Proctor. Maybe you'd like to tell them about that, the class that we, we attended separately, but the same class. True, true. So back in 2019, uh, when I was sitting in my office, uh, I I never used to read any kind of books earlier. So I was just sitting in my office and uh, there was a friend just beside me and she was just having the book, The Secret. And uh, somehow my eyes fell on the book and uh, I was so dragged and attracted like a magnet towards that book. Uh, so I asked her to share the book with me. And uh, she said me that it was uh, her friend's book and she just borrowed it from her friend. So I thought, let me just buy the book and read it. So the very day I came back home, I immediately booked it on the Amazon. And the next day I got it, uh, I received it from Amazon. So it took me like I read it almost eight times, one after another, one after another for eight long times. And then I was so impressed by the book. I thought, let me just groom myself in this area. 
and then i understood the power of personal development so what yeah. i did is i yeah. connected with bob proctor and then i took a 13 months of coaching from bob proctor like yes. the way you did and yes. you must have seen a terrific change in yourself an amazing wonderful change right so the same thing has happened with me. I took a 13 months of course from Bob Proctor. I learned it from him. And then I started to use it in my day-to-day -day life. So as I was learning, at the during the time I was learning, I started to use it. And then after like uh, for almost one, one and a half year, uh, my eyes somehow fell on Neville Goddard. And from then I fell in love with Neville Goddard. So I started buying the book, uh, The Power of Awareness, um, uh, because it uh, you had recommended the same book uh, to someone. I read one of your posts and you had recommended the same book to someone to go through Power of Awareness and Awakened Imagination. So I started with that book. I immediately, I didn't tell you that, but I immediately started following you. And uh, I started reading that book. I fell in love. I, I understood the concepts very easily. So once I got it, I thought, let me just apply them more and more in my life to see how it all works and how we can bring a dramatic change in ourselves. So to build a great self-concept for myself so that I create that image. I live with that image in the being and that image creates my reality. That's wonderful. So, so Swati, no, that's great. I wanted to highlight a couple of things that you mentioned. So with Bob Proctor, um, I actually became, that's when I first started getting into coaching. I had already been a teacher. I had a background. It's a long story, but um, I uh, started getting into teaching the law of attraction and, and then henceforth the law of uh, assumption after that. But Bob Proctor had a teach. I had a uh, coaching program called Thinking Into Results. And I actually went to Toronto and not only doing that 13 month class that you did, the coaching class, but I went and got some personal coaching with a, with a, a large group there that were also becoming coaches for thinking into results. And so absolutely amazing. Uh, miss Bob Proctor, but you know, it's like he's still around. You can find him on YouTube and he's just an amazing man. And you know, something a lot, a lot of people may not realize is that Bob Proctor was a big fan of Neville Goddard. He mentioned Bob yeah. uh, Neville Goddard many times in that 13 month program and elsewhere in his teaching. So he was also a big fan of Neville Goddard and, uh, particularly that concept of already having it, because that's one of the differences. Bob Proctor, uh, again, he as Neville did, he spoke about the, the law of vibration and vibration. A lot of people don't know that Neville taught that, but he actually did, especially in Out of This World, his book. Exactly. Neville yeah, absolutely. But um, also that the, the concept of having it already, I find that in your background and uh, our experience together, that you particularly have developed it using that how has your philosophy developed and uh, not so much the background of it but now in applying it uh, tell us a little bit more about that because you do that marvelously okay so i'll tell you a very small example that happened during the covid time uh when we had lockdown here and we were not allowed to like go out uh during the time i had a very fascinating uh feeling of having a frankie Okay, so I thought, let me go go and have a Frankie. But to have a Frankie, we should have a wrap with us. So inside that, I had to give this chicken stuffing. So I was trying to buy because here in India, we can get the wrap available uh, to buy as well. So I, I thought, let me, I told my husband, let's go and buy the wrap and then come in. We, we went to different shops and it was not available. But then I, I imagined that I should get a wrap. So I went uh, and I came out and then I told, let's go on a ride. Let's see if we get the wrap and come back. Because since I had imagined, I was damn sure that it, I, I am going to get it for sure. So I, I, we went out and there was a restaurant available just uh, which had recently opened after the COVID and uh, after the lockdown, in fact. And uh, they, I asked them, can you give me the wrap? Uh, they said, yes, uh, we can give it. We can even deliver it to your house. So you don't have to wait here. So I told, okay, fine, that's okay. I came back home. So when the, when the wrap was delivered at my house, it was cut into two pieces. So then I understood that how important is clarity of imagination. I had imagined to get a wrap. I got the wrap, but the wrap was cut into two pieces. 
the uh, i i forgot actually the purpose for which i wanted the wrap was to make a chicken franki but then this for to make that chicken franki we should have a round wrap instead of a cut wrap the wrap was cut into two pieces and then i understood how important is clarity of imagination so wow. from that very day till then i was just imagining multiple things but from that very day i became serious about clarity of imagination you know that something every single... yeah you know i was just going to say you're using it in all parts of your life now you're using it i know you don't maybe not want to tell us much about it but i know you're manifesting an international move also in your life um but you point out something very important that even in apparently seemingly small matters i mean i use the law of assumption and i this uh law of imagining, imagining that you already have it. I use it daily. People seem to get very wrapped up in only using it to, to get that house or to go try to get the car, manifest a new job, but they don't realize it's something that they can use daily. Exactly. That true, yeah? It is actually not manifesting a particular thing. You can get it for a short interval. However, if you become that person through the process of manifestation, mm -hmm. the journey is very important. Mm -hmm. It will make you that person to, by which you, when you reach and get that manifestation, you are completely that person who has already received it in your heart, mind and soul. So that that is how manifestation teaches us. So the first and foremost thing which I feel is the most important thing is to create a big self-concept for ourselves. The way we want the, the world to see us, the way we see ourselves is the two these two are the most important thing as we see ourselves the world is, will see the, us the same way so if you see yourselves as uh, yourself as a poor person the world will see you as a poor person it yeah. is you who has to define that self concept for yourself that is and awesome then, yes i mean, you you're on you're you're on to something obviously C could you emphasize that for us because that was that was powerful and also i'd like to mention this again that you're in india I know we know India is an, is a, a country of extreme wealth and 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 success, but there also is a large chunk of your uh, population that maybe is in poverty or in a lower lower standard, and perhaps they uh you know they will see this video and they will be inspired. Um, how can you maybe share that in a way that will help? Um, because again, self concept. If they've been raised in as a in a poor family. Everyone in their background and their family has always been relatively poor. How can they overcome this with a change of self-concept? Any uh, suggestions for them? Yeah. So first of all, we all have to understand that the rich and the poor, all of, all of us have a state of mind. The very moment we see ourselves as already rich. So what I would suggest to all everyone is, just see yourself with a bigger amount. Change your limit. For example, if you have thought of $10,000 as a bigger amount for yourself to become rich, just change that amount to $100,000 and see yourself, imagine yourself, feel yourself already receiving that $100,000. Mm -hmm. So as you see, feel and believe, you, see, you will see for a certain period of time, your heart, mind won't accept that. But even with a prolonged period of time, as you do it every single day before you go to sleep, you will see that in your sats as you do it, you will see in a certain point in time, you will already manifest that in your mind. So once you have manifested that in your mind, you will see it on the outer reality. Wonderful. Yeah, that's awesome. And you know what? We have a lot of viewers that are, are not familiar with Neville's works. And so some of the your terminology, of course, is, is of course you say in a very understandable way. But you mentioned something interesting earlier, and that is that you were not a reader so much, but now you no. are a reader. How important I is am. that? Because um, because you you mentioned the, the book, The Power of Awareness. And I will mention that book in our in our description too, because this is the one book that really with Neville Goddard has made a difference with uh Sawathi and so many others. It's the book that I promote more than any other. And particularly when they get the first few chapters is about self-concept, how we view ourselves, 
right, is so, so important that she mentioned. Also, Sawati, you mentioned uh, about that bringing it into our sleep, imagining what we want as already ours and bringing it into our sleep. And we know that one of the key chapters in that book is chapter 19, which is called Essentials. And if they go to chapter 19 of Essentials in the Power of Awareness, they can get a written detail of what Sawati has described, that we need to imagine it first and then bring it into our sleep. And, you know, the science behind that with uh, Joe Dispenza talks about the science behind that is that getting into that alpha state, getting into that relaxed state makes our mind open and susceptible to taking in the information down into what Bob Proctor talked about, into our subconscious. Isn't that true? And the best part is, Robert, it is gifted to us by the Lord, by the universe. The universe has actually gifted this alpha state to us and we can even create this alpha state any time in our day if we're at any point in time even after having our lunch or just taking just thinking of a small power nap just right before we take a power nap we can just imagine everything is already done for us and once that is done we will see that it is very 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 easy and the best part is it is just the effortless way the minimum yes. amount of energy multiplied by the minimum amount of time it is just the effortless way so Beautiful. easy so quick chapter 14 of the power of awareness yes you know because like you like you say most people think that they need to accomplish things always through struggle and pain and worry and stress whereas it's the exact opposite yes you need to focus on and obviously there may be a need for certain education and effort in certain areas to develop a skill for work, for career, and so forth. But it's done with ease and acceptance. And, li and like you say, the effort and the struggle sometimes gets us the opposite result. You know, something interesting is, uh, um, and I and I don't, maybe I'm, I, you can uh, get as personal as you like about this, because many people, I think, that see such things as the law of attraction, the law of assumption, and this whole idea of being able to manifest what you want in your life, they see it as being in conflict with religion. And I don't agree at all because we know that even Neville Goddard had very much a Christian background and, and believed firmly in the Bible. And yet uh, your background is more in uh, in the uh, Hindu, Hindu space, right? In the Hindu religion. We have others that are from a Buddhist background. They may be from another religious background. And why it, do you feel, because you know what? I honestly, I would say at least half of my students and viewers um, in the past, not just from YouTube, but in my in my students and clients have been from India. You you just have a natural spirituality to you. And how could you maybe help them understand it's not in conflict that they, they really can go together All and you can, still, you can still keep your religion? The same thing. All the religions teach the same thing. So now let us understand what is prayer. Prayer is actually believing in what we have asked for. So this is what is there in all the religions. If you go to any of the scripts, whether you go to Bhagavad Gita or you go to Bible, wherever you go, you will see the meaning of prayer is same. Prayer always means that you believe in what you have asked for. You believe that you have already received. So whatever you believe in prayer, see that you already have received it. This is, is, this is always unique in every religion. So it is same for every religion. So it does not matter which religion you are in. So as, so as you apply Neville's teachings, you will see a tremendous change in your life. You will see everything flowing towards you. Mm, very good. And you know what? Maybe you could highlight a little bit more for us because, again, we know that uh, India has uh, both extremes, uh, a lot of wealth and, and also poverty. If we if we have have some viewers that are in that in that part of the, you know, of India or in their work careers where they're just they want to uh, they want to raise themselves to a higher level um, again with self concept and so forth. Um, what do you think might be one of the biggest challenges for them to overcome as far as mentality? Because I know there's a lot of cultural pressure there. There's a belief system of, you know, you're born into certain levels, perhaps. And so how, how might they overcome that thinking? So first of all, they will have to define their I am. What is their I am? So if they say I am poor, 
they'll have to define mm. their I am and change it to I am rich. I am the richest person on earth. Change the I am and then you will see the change will happen. Mm. So if you think of anything else, change, think yourself as the king or queen of the world. Just change the I am. If you say I am just a normal civ civilian, just change it. I am the queen. I am the king. So as you change, you will see everything coming to you. And at the same time, you will have to, even though there are multiple circumstances happening in and around you, everyone has to understand that they have to build self-love first. Mm -hmm. Self-love should be always unconditional. So you have mm -hmm. to tell yourself every single day that I love myself unconditionally. So as you say yourself, the, you are going to shower love to yourself. And as soon as you fill your subconscious with your love, you can share it with others. And then you are going to pour it to the entire world. So you all have to define your I am first. As soon as you define your I am, you build a self-concept for yourself. Beautiful. You know, one other one other topic I'd like to discuss with you is that I find that every successful manifester has wonderful habits. Things that you do perhaps every day that gets you in the right sense of mentality and mindset when you start your day and then maybe at the end of your day. Share your, if you could share a little bit about your habits that will be helpful to our friends here. Yeah, sure. So I, I also have a family. So what I do is I define my time accordingly. So it is not only me, uh, because our tribe is our vibe, so we all have to understand that as soon as we make our environment in our way, then everything will start to align. So what we have done in our family is like me, my husband and I have a son. So all three of us are aligned with it. So every morning, as soon as we wake up, all three of us, we immediately go and start our gratitude journal. All three of us. So we start our, even my son does it. He is just seven years old and he also does it. So we start seeing, being grateful for all that we have in our life. And we we are also grateful for all that we want in our life. And we are grateful beforehand right now. So that is the first and foremost practice that we do. Then we go for a med meditation of five to 10 minutes. And then followed by visualizing, we have written down our goals. So what we do is we start, we create that mental scene immediately and we start to see and visualize it as already done. So this is done by everyone in our family. Like me, I do it, my son does it, my husband does it. So we do it every single day. So this is our first and foremost morning routine that we follow with a glass of water. And I we always that. use the it. glass of water technique as well because water carries memory and prayers. So we use the water technique as well. So every time throughout the day, whenever we drink water, we take a glass of water and then we feel that all our goals, all our desires are achieved. We see, feel and visualize and thank the water for it. So every single time throughout the day, I think we drink almost 12 to 14 glasses of water. So 14 times throughout the day, we do it. So yeah, that I is to, I another mention, practice. That's so powerful because a lot of people might hear that and go, what? What? She's, she's using water to manifest? I mean, what the deal? No, it's scientific. The friends here, if they're if they're skeptical at all, they can I actually can, go, If go anyone online. wants to see, yeah. it's the Dr. Yeah. Remoter's experiment. They can go. I can actually go on. Uh, you can. I'll let you mention that one more time in just a second here. Just so I just want to reiterate that they can go online and there's been studies that show the power of water. How water you can you you can have uh, negative things in water. You can have negative uh, thoughts of love. And they actually have examined the crystals and the and the molecules in the water, and they can actually see the difference in whether it's healthy or not depending on what's the thoughts have been placed in that water. So you, you started to say, and I didn't mean to interrupt you, but you said that they can, where, where can they find more about that? So they can get it from Dr. Emoto's experiment. Uh, once they Google it, Dr. Emoto's experiment on water, they, they'll get a clear cut idea of it. Excellent. So, so we're not talking magic here. We're talking science and the fact that the power of the mind and spirituality can be moved into water and then drinking the water 
and believing that you're receiving what you're meant. I mean, this is this is is not the typical. And I hope I hope that if some people sit up, I'm going to make note of this so that they do. Uh, if they really pay attention to this, these are the habits. And I'm going to reiterate, you, we'll, you know, we'll make sure that they get this part, maybe rewatch it again. I recommend you go back about five minutes and rewatch this part, everybody, because her daily habits are what, regardless of your station of wealth currently, this is not based on whether you're wealthy or not. This is something you can do individually and you do it as a family, which is amazing. Absolutely. So we follow this in the morning and right before we go to bed as well, we follow the gratitude practice and visualizing and revising all the events of the day as well. So we use revision as a practice for all the events. We also use revision for others. So every day I have like made it for others, at least three of the wishes I revise for others. And, and then I, I do it for myself. I do it for my family. And then we visualize all our goals and then we go to sleep. And uh, during the day as well, like Neville Goddard has stated multiple times in all his lectures, in all his books, we take a small power nap. And just before we take a small power nap, we sit and we visualize again all our goals. So I think we I'm so aligned with all my goals throughout the day. So I, I keep on doing it. And even like Bob Proctor also says, just carry a goal card and every time the goal, keep it in your pocket and every single time your hand touches the pocket, open and see and feel and visualize. So that is how we do it. Beautiful, beautiful. And that goes back to uh, Napoleon Hill. I mean, uh, really, this is amazing stuff. Thank you so much. And something you mentioned earlier and I know, you know, that you know that I practice this too. And it's part of what you talked about gratitude is we recall what Bob Proctor gave us to actually write down 10 things you're grateful for every morning. And every morning do this. You can actually make your own. You can just make a, he, he, although he had a printed version, uh, one through 10 with space for it, or you can just take a notebook and do this and write down 10 things that you're grateful for and go over those each and every morning to uh, be, as you start your day. And that's might help some of them because you've gotten to the point where you the, your family is so used to it, you can just do it. But for some, it might be helpful to actually have a notebook and write these things down, right? Yes, absolutely. They can write it down once and then feel it every single day because feeling is the secret. You don't have to write it 100 times and don't have to like uh, stress yourself in writing. You can write it once and every single day you can read and feel it. So that will work out magically for you. Beautiful. Well, this has been absolutely amazing. You've given so many tips. And again, I'm going to go back and rewatch this several times myself because you really highlighted some amazing stuff. So maybe as a final thought, uh, maybe you could again reach out to our friends because I know you have friends worldwide, Swati, especially yeah. on our Facebook site, Neville Goddard Mystic Teachings. We just spilled over into 60,000 members, by the way. We Ooh, just crossed wow, over 60,000 members on Neville Goddard Mystic Teaching Facebook site. By the way, some of the uh, many of, of the uh, people that I'm interviewing are all coaches and moderators on that site, including Miss Swati right here. So any final thoughts? Again, I really want to reach that the, the people in India along with everyone else. Any final words of encouragement to, to uh, your friends and uh, family and so forth in India? Because I think we're going to get a lot of views from India and I want it to impact them fully. Again, any final thoughts for them? So first of all, we all have to understand that circumstances do not matter at all. So circumstances that we see on the outside is just a reflection of our own self. So we can change the circumstances at any point in time in our life. So that even does not matter what, what is your circumstance, where you are in life. You can be in a very small village and become the prime minister of the country as well. So that doesn't even matter at all. So the first and 
commerce thing is what do you exactly want? You will have to make it very clear for yourself. So until you are not clear exactly of what exactly do you want, you are going to get half hazard result in your outer world. Mm -hmm. So the first and foremost thing is very clear of exactly what you want. So as I gave, I cited an example earlier, be, be very clear of what you want. And as you are clear, see that you have already achieved it. And how do you see that already achieved it? You create a mental scene, a mental picture in your mind or an event in your mind that it has already happened with you. And in the event, see yourself being in the event, doing it for you, doing it, being a person who is actually doing it, not seeing it from a distance happening. Mm -hmm. See yourself being in it. So how do you be in it? Use all your senses being involved in that scene. So uh, as you see all your senses being involved in that scene, you will automatically get yourself engrossed in it. And once you are engrossed, you will love being that person. And as you love being that person, you will become that person. And as you become, you will see it on the reality. Oh my God, that's so that's so powerful. We are so blessed to have you on the channel and have, and have this interview. So um, would you say one of the best ways, and if you have any other suggestions, let me know, I'll, I'll put it in the link. But for uh, anyone who, I, who would like to either contact you or, or learn more about you, I know one of the suggestions I will leave for them, of course, is to go to Neville Goddard Mystic Teachings because they can type in your name on the Facebook site, Neville Goddard Mystic Teachings, and uh, Swat, Swati uh, Manapatra, and they will be able to find your posts because you do some marvelous posts weekly that are inspiring. So they'll be able to find you there. Is that what you would suggest? Or do you have any, anything yes, else you'd like to recommend? Yes, absolutely. And they can, they can connect me from there. They can connect me from Neville Goddard Mystic Teachings as well. And they can even ask you to connect with me. And they can ask anyone from the Neville Goddard Mystic Teachings to connect with me. Yeah. So any single time they, they want, they can, everyone, where there's a will, there's always a way. So the, the very moment you think of me, you move on to that frequency and you will connect with me. Well, absolutely marvelous. And also, um, uh, Sawati, of course, you're going to you're going to be checking the comments in this uh, that will be responded to in this video. And those of you out there, please comment. Because, and if you have questions for Sawati, she will be checking the comments. She will be assisting me, not assisting me, but she'll be answering some of your questions and she'll be looking for your comments. Uh, I would really love her to do that because a lot of our friends from India might be commenting and wondering about how to do things and what really has helped Sawati manifest what a marvelous life. But it's all been in this video. You've given us everything. You've really been marvelous. Sawati, I want to thank you so much from India, giving us so much beautiful inspiration. And uh, I look forward to, of course, uh, talking to you again. We we have a good relationship and and uh, you are so helpful as a moderator and uh, so active on our Facebook site. So thank you very much. And I am uh, absolutely thrilled. And I want to thank, thank you, you for so much, Robert, for this wonderful opportunity. It is absolute pleasure to be with you. It's an honor and I thank you and we'll talk again soon. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Namaste.